It's early May 2001. In Glasgow's West End, auditions have begun for a new musical. Hi, good morning. Good morning. You just get straight into the hall. There's all waiting there. Lovely, thank you. Arabian Nights will be premiered in the city in April 2002. The cast of the show will be made up of experienced professionals, students, friends of the production team and members of the public. The show is being funded by Stowe College to coincide with the institution's new musical theatre course. With musicals closing by the day in London's West End, it's obviously a calculated risk. Um, we wrote something uh, back in yonder days called The Beast in the Tower, Stephen's first ever musical, which I had the honour to write lyrics for. And, um, Basically, Stephen and I have been friends for a long time and sort of get involved from time to time with things like this. So when he asked me if I wanted to get involved this time, I seized the opportunity with both hands because every time Stephen has put something on, it's been getting bigger and bigger and just better and better. So I just In Glasgow, there is no shortage of young hopefuls hungry for the fame and fortune Arabian Nights could bring them. After two weeks of extensive auditioning, the task of deciding who gets in has only just begun. Yes, you're in the show. Yes, I was involved in the production of Wallace last year and I had seen that in a newspaper article and went along to a rehearsal, got involved in it, became very friendly, it was a very friendly, close cast, so I kept in contact with Stephen, who had written this show, who um, is writing this show as well, and basically he got in contact with me and asked me if I would like to come along and be involved in it again. A total of 278 people auditioned for the chance to be in Arabian Nights, but only 70 will make it to the final stages. Stephen Langston, the producer, director and writer of the show, there's still a lot of late nights to look forward to before his biggest project to date goes on stage. Now I have a fact. The auditions are finally nearing their conclusion. Okay, sit down, get right in there, right in, right in. Okay. Okay. Unless you wear that every day. Okay. Now what I want to do now is on your seat you're going to have to share, okay, so make sure there's one between two of you. Get in. The whole lot. The whole lot. <laughs> Unfortunately, the whole lot did not get in.
The additions are now over, so Stephen dishes out some good news. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Hello, is that Suzanne? Hi Suzanne, it's Stephen Langston here. Hi, how are you? Good, I'm very well. I've got a question for you. Right, what did you sing at your audition? To make sure you're not hurt again. At 14 years old, Suzanne McLean displays a maturity beyond her years. Hi. Hi. Yes, um, Suzanne, would you like the part of Dummy Sure. Good. Good. Because we're not going to get to Yes, we are. So well done, and I'll be in contact very shortly. All right, bye-bye. Bye. I think I made somebody rather happy there. Hmm. <laughs> With money being limited, each stage of the production has to be accounted for down to the last penny. Basically, I'm going to go for a cabaret style. Tables, tablecloths, candles, bring your own wine, so we don't have to worry about license. And then I will have two of our smallest children dressed up as uh, cast from Oliver, mm -hmm. looking like beggars, and going around with buckets going, Please, sir, give me some money. Right, so that's how we'll raise the money for them. <coughs> Out of that, we'll pay the janitor for the evening, which is how much? £40, something like that? Might be that much. You know. And we could get a couple of hundred quid out of it. Um, but there's potential advertising for radio nights. Oh, even now, trying to do it. Yeah, well, I'm going to set yeah, a program way. space as well. We'll do a little program and, and just say that this is this is for charity. Anything is for charity here. Um, the papers will definitely be pulled in, certainly by Samantha's um, presence and mm. also by what we're doing. The actual yeah. thing is quite good. And also, there's a slight tinge on it, Arabian Nights. Now, we're all slightly concerned about Arabia at the moment. <laughs> but as I said, we're not at war with Arabs. We're not at war with anyone, we're at war with terrorists, not Arabs. Yeah. So that's the stance we have if anybody says to you. We're at war with terrorists, which is the case, um, so the show will go on. Just don't mention too much that it's actually set in Iraq and Baghdad, <laughs> but there we go. Um, So it's literally on the beat, so it's dum, 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 dum. Okay? <laughs> that was really snappy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it like that? Yeah. yeah. You can stamp it. Yeah, stamp it. But you're still walking, so you're actually The director's walk, first task is to teach the cast how to walk in unison. And write down who is on your right. Okay? So write down who's on your left, who is on your right. 11, stop. 12, stop. 13, stop. 14, stop. 
15th stop, 16th stop. When you turn, when you turn, I want smaller steps. The cast numbers have been boosted by the arrival of students from the new musical theatre course. Away from the hurly-burly of the rehearsal room, the directors have yet to agree in the final look of the show. Okay, and they're facing in. All right, and that's and so we've got rid of the um, uh, well, put it like this: we've got on stage the really good singers. Okay, um, now they'll stay like that. Stuart will sing his bit all the way through, and then at bar thirty-two. They start moving, just to clarify, and they're moving into the Wallace W at that point. At 32. Start moving at 32, and they should be in place at bar 13. 6, 7, 8, 9, 4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you're just not going to have a good time meeting us at all. <laughs> you're supposed to be a That's film star as well. Right. Wendy is the choreographer. She's a lot of experience on the stage, including Stephen's most recent show, Wallace. Performed in March 2000. And then, um, some sort of Carol has worked in productions in with Stephen before and has been brought in as assistant director. Like not sort of together um, in a sort of semi random but controlled way and then moving forward to the front of the stage because all of the action's at the back so far. As well as it's, it's I said, not totally choreographed, so not lines again. Mm -hmm. This time a little bit different, but each person has got to know when exactly they're turning, yeah. so it gives that sort of dramatic walking towards, kind of eerie, sort of, oh, she's just done it. Yeah. She's just married him. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> At the home of Mr Langston, the pressure to complete Act 2 is on. process begins with getting an idea, sitting down at the piano um, for hours and hours and hours and working things out in your head and then when you've got the idea for individual songs you come up to this wonderful little room here and it all goes into the computer and it's orchestrated. Um, I never write piano scores, I do the whole thing all at once. Um, a lot of composers tend to do a, um, a piano score first um, but I like to get the bigger picture. When I have a scene in my mind, I literally sit here imagining that scene and um, working out the musical atmosphere to that. And I find it much easier if I've got a full orchestra. And with the help of technology, which you've got around here, um, then I can hear the full orchestra as I do. Well, obviously we've had the set designed. Um, the set needs to be, um, what, what has been designed needs to be hired and it needs to be made. Um, and needs to be put up. Uh, the costumes um, are being hired from Surrey, Hasselmere wardrobe. Um, I have to go down to Hasselmere actually and um, do the size fittings and choose all the costumes. Um, so that needs to be done. things about the cast. 
fantastic. Every producer will turn around and say he couldn't, couldn't have done this show without his cast. What an absolutely fantastic cast um, he's got. I, on the other hand, have probably one of the best casts that you can get. Um, we auditioned, it seems ages ago, it's almost a year ago, for various people from the public to join the cast. Um, we invited various professionals to join the cast and then we had the influx of music theatre students um, who arrived and then joined the cast for Raving Nights as well. So we've got a cast of about 60. We auditioned, must have been 250 people and I mean they're fantastic. I mean I've never known a group of people to work so hard. I mean on my last show they worked incredibly hard there. We had a few problems, not necessarily with the cast but with the production side of things. Um, and they worked, they worked very hard then, but this group of people are, are um, taking the stick that we give them, because we've got three directors, and because there's a lot of people, it gets very stressful sometimes. Um, so the cast are doing incredibly well, and um, I, I have no doubt that when they get up on stage, that's going to be one of the best Scottish performances that, uh, that Scotland has actually seen. I'm perfectly happy with that because yeah. I think that's the way theatre works. It's yeah. theatre, yeah. um, and you know you have your. One of the most crucial elements of any stage show is a set, and for this, Stephen has called in a professional, Donald McLean. Oh, right. So whenever they both, whenever she sings, she sings as well. So we got you on, and we keep it on. Okay, excellent. So we just, so we just, uh, not, well, we've got nothing nearly anyway for yeah. the courtroom. So you just shift attention to the bit. And if you get a position right, yeah. then your actor should, well, might be able to just sneak on. So that as it all goes down, or it all dissipates, and your image goes down. Uh, well, if not, we'll just drop the mic for it, and stuff like that. And he's there. You That'll know. work, then. I think so. I so, think that's, that so, basically, we're just doing a lighting effect to get from one scene to the other, and then bump into Genie. It's mm -hmm. fine. And he, so he's actually, in effect, entering to his yeah. left, isn't um, it? it would be a, a, a glass global image of the moon. Uh -huh. Projector, that's easy. Uh -huh. um, you need a regular alarm to do it, and I think you might be able to scale one up for you. This is just a. Um, like it's like almost. Yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, it's like a robot, basically. Scotty Desert, yeah. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I see how you. I didn't see that. Hmm. So, so, so ra rather than just rather than just being plain, because I think no, you're, you're right. No, I just see what something. you do. So you look. We've got a distance. Mm. So, you, so you get a oh, it's kind of blend of haze and you know. Oh yeah. Cameron will be proud of you. <laughs> Cameron, <laughs> Cameron Macintosh. <laughs> oh, I wish he would. <laughs> I wish he would have been too. <laughs> That's brilliant. You know how to be upset because you need to be upset here, okay. right? Um, this is this is fairly cruel, but you actually have to really look upset. Okay, what you have to do is to think of something that's horrible that's happened to you in your life. Whether it be, I'll say the word if anybody's died that's close to you or anything like that. You actually have to think of that when you get to this bit, and you start thinking of it too, because that's what has got to come across. So in this space, this first section here, I want you to think that in your head, and it does work, because that's the difference between. The amateur acting and, and the real acting, that's what they're thinking of, stuff like that. And it's not smelling salts that bring the tears on. If you cry, great, that's what I want. So start thinking miserable things. The minute you're kneeling down there, okay, and the minute you're walking on as well, think miserable. And then, when you get up, you're still miserable. But you're um, I'm Susan McLean, I'm 14 years old and I live in Cathkin, but it's near Burnside. I play Donny Zed in Arabian Nights, which is the part of the younger sister of Shahir Zed. And I try to save her by going to ask the genie to help me and save her from Shahira. To share is up to the Sherry. Oh, I have found this body must be worth a deal or two. He had no idea what he had found and shook the bottle in his hand. In his hand. Shook the bottle in his hand. Oh, dear me. We need to look at each 
other. Oh dear me, that's it. Oh dear me and Fisherman and the Genie is a first story told by Shahrazad, and the cast preparing for the grand entrance of the evil genie Al Sakhria. Richard Hughes and uh, depending on how you view things I'm either lucky or unlucky to be playing the part of the genie. Um, I actually started singing acting if that's what you want to call it through blackmail. Uh, I volunteered to help Stephen's last show which was Wallace and ended up with one of the main parts in it so you can say for two three years. Uh, during the day I'm a banker. I work for the Bank of Scotland in the business banking uh, section in Motherwell. I've got um, one day to go before the cast receive Act 2 and I haven't finished yet. I'm about, I'm about 15, minutes, 15 minutes before the end um, but the way I'm working it is that uh, uh, because there's no music repeated in this show the, the beginning comes back at the end and um, so it's it's repeated. It's sort of repeated music. It's it's reorchestrated and redone, but much more in a dramatic style. So I, I think I'll have it. I'll certainly have it finished by tomorrow night, maybe fifteen minutes worth of music. Yeah, yeah. Should well, might be able to just sneak on, so that as it all goes down or it all dissipates and your image goes down. Uh, well, if not, we'll just drop the lights for it and stuff like that. And he's there. Show, show them the bottom, please. Look, 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 at this. look at that. Okay, now look, 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 look. And then it starts to shake. Right. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. No no way. Way. My army was then defeated. My eagle had a big white blow. Woof! Must do the woof. That'll work. It'll be very funny. Put that in. Big white blow. Woof. Oh. Me about death. You have opened up the bottle which Suleiman put me in to suffer. I've been hunted, smashed, and grounded for one eternal sin. Going to come across as nasty, but at the end of by the by the end of the show, I hope I'm going to be a nice person who everybody is going to love. I could be so lucky. Girls, be well, so what you gotta do is rock. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but what you've gotta do? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what well, you've you gotta do? Right? You've gotta you've gotta hide your faces. You've gotta just right. And just, right? It's, you know those big statues. You've seen a big gold statue of all the ladies' arms all over. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just rub. Yeah, that'd be fine. If you could just Once he goes two thousand years out there all alone, you question me about death. Okay, so you stay that you've got. To... Oh okay. God! Oh, you've got to actually do that. Do a do be do. Smile. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
you know, it's been great fun. If it was something that I didn't enjoy and didn't enjoy working with the people, then obviously you wouldn't want to come along, but great people to work with and it's just been a laugh. It's been really relaxed atmosphere. We want to create a relaxed atmosphere anyway, so that's our job. Our job's the kind of good bit. I don't know if I'd like to be in the actual singing edition, sitting on a panel watching people. Instead, it's quite good to just mix them with them and they don't feel too intimidated or scared or nervous. In order to enhance the dramatic impact, the musical score allows for intricate dance sequences. I am not writing Act Two. <laughs> Give up. Mm. I want a cigarette. I am tired and I have had enough of writing Arabian Nights and I've got two days left to finish Act Two and I've had enough. I could move a halfway point and put the end of Act One into Act Two and move the halfway point forwards and then we won't have to do the last story which isn't necessary, which will cut down the whole show in length, and then that means I've finished, apart from the tie-ups. So there we go. Should I do that? Shall I cheat? <laughs> Seeing it's on film, uh, no, we won't. We'll keep the last story in, because nobody will know what the last story is, so that's all right. But apart from that, you're enjoying yourself? No, I hate it. Central to all the large chorus scenes is a group of individuals selected to play the parts of dirty old men. That's good. That's good. Um, that happens. So basically, in the beginning music. Here, My name is Ron Miller, and I'm vice principal in the college, um, and I look after the building and the quality uh, systems within the college. <laughs> Being in here, I would like to have a wee lash of singing and dancing and things. Maybe not the dancing, I'm not so good at that. But uh, it appealed to me, and Stephen asked if I was interested in helping the back in the background, so I thought I may as well be in the foreground as well. Um, and I also fancy part of being a dirty old man, you know, I go, oh, I'm brilliant at that, you see. So I just like the whole idea of being in, in there. <laughs>
name's Samantha Seth, I'm 12 years old and I play Marzana. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name's JJ McGrory and I play City in the show of Arabian Nights. <laughs> I think they're drunk at one properly. 15 and a half. Um, I auditioned for Arabian Nights and they didn't have a pack for me so they wrote me a pack called Marjana, who's a genie's slave and she gets to sing a solo in the second half. <laughs> at college and my mentor. No, I can't even say that while laughing, I can't even actually say that seriously. Um, what else can I say about Stephen? Hmm. I take it you just want dirt on him? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's okay, I don't have any. I'm not going to say anything, it's fine. You don't have to um, stop it. Yep, I'm playing alongside Angela, um, who's playing Sherazad. Chemistry-wise, we get on. Um, the first time I really met Angela, I'd seen her about, of course, because she was playing the lead in the show. Um, but I came in for the very first rehearsal after getting the part of Sharia. I was told by Wendy, the choreographer, right, tonight we're doing the sex scene in the show. I think they thought that would be a good way for us to get to know each other quickly. So the two of us were thrown into a room together with Wendy. Some music was played and we were told to ravish each other and roll about on the floor. So it was a good introduction. Everything else since then has been easy. Um, but we seem to get on okay, I think. She's probably saying terrible things about me behind my back. Frodo, obviously, um, I hadn't met until the first night I'd actually had a conversation with Frodo was the, the evening of striding him across in a bed. Um, and I had sort of two options, being incredibly embarrassed about it uh, or just throw myself into it, literally, um, and decided to just throw myself into it. Unfortunately, I've been a reasonably strong kind of big woman, but um, I, when Wendy was choreographing it, she said to me to try and throw Frodo passionately on a bed as opposed to picking him up and putting him there. So I'm trying to be more passionate with Frodo if possible without like giving him a hip replacement before the end, before the end of the six months. <laughs> Frodo's brilliant, yes. Frodo's a wonderful guy. Love working with him. Absolutely fantastic. Um, go, I killed my wife and slave, for they betrayed. I hear their scream from hell below But my loss is far greater than the death which wore off eventually. I uh, finally caught on that he wasn't. Um, but he did come across that way at first. Uh, I think it may have just been the theatrical environment. He does go over all lovey at times. But then I do as well, um, so that's okay. I do think Stephen's coping admirably. Um, he's smoking a lot more cigarettes, I think, though. And every now and then you do see him wandering about the corridors of the college muttering to himself. Um, usually with a lot of swear words. And it was only last week that he had his first real strop with the cast. So that was amazing because we've been at this for nearly a year now. And for Stephen to finally lose it, and it was great because everyone went, Oh my God, Stephen's shouting at us. What? I just think he's coping. I think he's coping very well considering um, he's under a hell of a lot of pressure. And I don't know if he, when he lost his, his temper a wee bit last week, and I think he felt quite bad about it. 
because he sort of was making excuses for it the next day and then uh, he's claiming it was planned. I think he did actually get quite angry. Um, but as I say, if it was me, I'd have lost it an hour beforehand and I'd have definitely slapped somebody. So I think he did quite well. It's quite interesting because Stowe's an engineering college and up until them doing Wallace they'd never done anything of this nature um, and in a couple of years suddenly there's a musical theatre, HND, a uh, theatre arts, NQ running. Um, the entire cast have been brought together from all sorts of backgrounds. We've got wannabe pop stars, people who are dancers, folk who are more actors, varying ranges of experience so the people in the course have now been brought into the Arabian Nights cast. Um, which has gone really well. Some of them are terrified because it's the first show and it's a biggie. Um, others are really looking forward to it from a, a challenge point of view. So it's worked really well. I think Stowe College, do we definitely know the principal's very proud because he comes and visits us a lot and tells us how great we all are, um, which is amazing because last time I was at university I don't think I even saw the principal once. So we must be doing something right. So kudos to Stephen there I suppose. Yeah, two bus loads of bus, bus, buses arrived for Wallace. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 How many have you got coming? Hundreds, see? So, I mean, because it's a big cast, this is one of the reasons why I went for big cast. That's a hundred in the cast, just about, and each one would easily get four people. That's four hours, one night sold out. So many nights are we on? I don't know when's the fifty five. All the costumes which have been handmade by Hasselmere Wardrobe have now arrived ready for the first fitting. Initially when the, the idea of a musical uh, was brought to me, there, there, there were suggestions that it might be a wee bit uh, off our normal curriculum delivery, but uh, we certainly felt it would be a, a worthwhile project. The work had been done, the reports were put in, we have to satisfy sound curriculum arguments. These were made. It became evident very quickly that this was a major field of work that we should embark further on and further develop. The benefit to the staff, the benefit to the students, 
the benefits to our community became obvious very, very quickly. The ongoing work through rehearsals has demonstrated and confirmed that, so much so we're delighted to look forward to further investment in this kind of work in music theatre. A production such as Arabian Nights offers a great deal to our staff, to our students, to our stakeholders and to the community that we serve, particularly our community, because we can have participation not only in performance but also in backstage such as lighting, orchestration, a production, support of production. Production such as this, uh, a professional production, uh, is costly, but the proposal that was brought to us is one that will see this course in effect wipe its face. By CD sales, ticket sales, uh, sponsorship, it's our intention that we should recover the full cost of this course. Bear in mind it's, the base, it's based on our course, and I think this is important that people don't understand that and every course costs money. So there is a cost and there's a major benefit in this. Life was boring before When I was surrounded by gore Horror, blood and death Sad and so The big day has finally arrived And the set arrives at the theatre for the getting I? I think I'm going to cry Quite brief. 
future uh, for this kind of production within the context of music creative industries in the college is fairly massive. Not only do we intend to invest further in the curriculum and further the production such as this, but we also intend to invest in the estate and facilities to support this. This will obviously depend, be dependent on a decent part for myself in next year's production. But to everyone, well done. It's been great. Let your